Hey everybody, it is Hutch again with the Survival University and I want to share something for you. My friend Creek Stewart put this out in his last Apaco box and this is so cool. So this is really, really cool. What he did is he combined, a lot of you scouts have made wax cordage before. We'll show you how if you haven't, don't worry. And a lot of you, especially the military, have had to make a trench match before, which as you know involves some chemicals and stuff to make your ember run. It's, uh, it's a way that they used to light cigarettes and bombs and stuff in, in uh, I can't remember if it was World War I or World War II, but he combined the two ideas and this thing is so cool because it will allow you to have a torch at night, to dry out wet tinder, to make fires, and I just kind of like to show you how I've been using it and uh, we'll show you how to make them. These things are cool and it's, it's an old thing that has, um, two old things have been combined to be one of my favorite uh, fire kits and if you combine that with some fat wood and a ferro rod you've got a real solid fire kit. So step one, like always, we want to increase our surface area so that this will catch a spark or anything like that. And I just go up next to a tree or a rock and I just rubber around until I've got a nice fluffy little area that's going to catch my spark or take any other low heat source and turn into a flame. This is great if your tinder source might have some moisture into it from a couple days of snow or rain. This will give you a long enough burn time that you can dry out your tinder source and allow that heat to transfer from item to item and build up into a fire. So I just put my ferro rod on the fluff. That'll keep it from moving around if I accidentally hit it. Throw a little bit in there. Now this metal allows me to control the size of the flame. If I pull it back, just like a candle, it can get bigger and bigger. Um, and it allows me to, with any type of tinder that's not perfect I can get in there and I've got lots of burn time now if this blows out I have had it blow out on me before it's not if it'll stand up to a little bit of wind but a lot of wind it will go out no big deal you just fluff it up again and throw another little spark and then when you want to put it out just close it like a trench match you can get I have no idea how many fires out of a foot and a half for this stuff right here and at night you can control it to have a little bit of a candle or a torch. As I mentioned, it doesn't stand up real great to the wind, but it still does work pretty nifty to get yourself a little fire. So I wanna make a bunch of these and have them on the back of every one of my ferro rods instead of a lanyard. All I've got here, this is just a piece of an old uh, tent made a perfect little tube, but you can buy tubes, or if you want to, you can even make a tube out of anything hollow and you can absolutely do this just by doing the reverse twist method with natural cordage. And you can either, either use tallow or um, the sap from any of these trees out here, any resinous tree, and it'll work maybe not quite as good as the wax, but uh, quite effectively. So I've used several different types of cordage. This is the size I like the most. It gives me a nice decent burn, but smaller cordage works just fine. And larger, larger cordage just needs a bigger tube. Also works well. It does need to be some type of a natural cordage, jute twine, hemp, um, yucca, something you've made, but it does need to be something that would readily burn. Because remember what you have here is you've got a, a, a rapid fire, what we call a flash tinder, something like jute twine or dried yucca that's gonna burn really quick. And then a flame extender in the wax that's gonna allow that flame to like a candle to wick and burn for a long period of time. So your cordage cannot be something that's going to melt. It has to be something organic, something that'll work. Um, but as far as size go, it doesn't matter too much. Cotton? Cotton, absolutely. Cotton would work. Matter of fact, um, oh, no, I'm so sorry. Cotton will not work. Um, and the reason why is cotton uh, sucks up too much. Cotton works if you want to make the trench match for a running ember. But cotton will suck up so much of the wax, you get basically a super candle. And the reason we brought that up when we were doing that in experiments, these are some of the most amazing fire extending candles you'll ever see. We'll show you how to make those too. Um, but cotton will just absorb too much and it turns into a super hard, super dense candle that if you get it over open flame, 
burns for a super long time, so it will work. But as far as taking just a spark from a ferro rod, there's so much wax in there. I roughed it and I roughed it and I roughed it and I just could not get, um, it's just so dense, it just sucks it up too well. Just like um, when cotton absorbs the moisture from your body, that's, that's the problem with cotton, right? When it sucks something up, it holds on to it. Is what's called um, uh, piping. You use it for making clothing or furniture stuff. It's just, it's 100% cotton that's in tubes. It's just like cotton rope, but bigger. What happens is the cotton sucks up so much. Look how hard that is. That won't even break like a regular candle. It just really sucks up that wax. I mean, cotton wicks so good. That's why we don't like it in survival clothes that I can rough it and rough it and rough it. And I'm just not gonna get anything that's gonna catch a spark, but I'll tell you what. You add open flame to this, and you have got an absolute great way to get a fire going, boil a pot of water, maybe replace some of your hexamine cubes in the stoves that you're carrying, anything like this. Um, this, this is a definite fire extender, uh, but you do have to have open flame to get the benefits from it. So this method is really one of those being prepared kind of things. You set this up and then take it with you, kind of like you would your PJ cubes or something like that. Um, I do believe, I mean, it would be just as, I don't know about as easy, but it would be easy to do um, over a campfire uh, if you were using tallow or pine resin or if you needed to melt some candles. But this is really something we want to do before we go to the field. Now we're using a colored wax to make it easier for you to see. You can pick up wax super cheap at all kinds of hobby stores. I would not recommend using anything scented though. This, this is, so we'll just use it for classes. Um, just because bear country and all that, something that smells like strawberry is not great. But get yourself any old can, something from leftover from the last time you cooked, wash it out real well, dump some wax in. Just like that. And then just bring some water to a boil. So wax, you just put in however much. If you have too much, it'll just harden in there and you can use it again next time or for another project. Put that can into some boiling water. That just keeps you from burning the wax and it's the same thing you do with cooking. And we're just gonna let that turn into a liquid. Now, I would recommend grabbing a stick or something to stir this up so you don't ruin a spoon. And we just wait for that to turn to a liquid and then we just drop in about a foot or two foot piece of cord, whatever you, or really small pieces if you wanna just carry a lot of them and drop them into fires if you need to. <clears throat> Good, you're ready to go. This whole process is pretty forgiving. Then, you just take your cordage, whatever amount it is. It just has to be able to be completely submerged in the wax. You just put it in there and mash it down. And let it absorb some of that flame extender. Here, I'm just using regular old jute twine from the Dollar Tree. And leave it in there about long enough to say your ABCs. And then, take it out. And then we're going to try not to make too big a mess. Just get it out here flat on some tin foil or wax paper. Try and lay it out in such a way that it's not touching itself. That just causes some trouble later on. And it just takes a minute or two to dry. So this is that piping I was telling you about. And it comes in sizes ranging from toothpick up to, well, probably as big as you want, but at least as big as a baseball. It makes amazing char cloth. And it's what we use for our super candle. We're just gonna drop it right into some melted wax. It just has to be completely submerged. I'll leave it in there for about long enough to say my ABCs. Maybe a minute might be better. And then when we pull it out, we'll let it dry and you're gonna have your very own super candle. All right, once it's dry, you're ready to go. Just something else I wanna point out. Make sure whatever you use will slide. See how this doesn't slide readily? I can pull it which is great for making a fire, but remember this is an extended fire source. So we wanna be something that'll slide so we can make our flame bigger or smaller um, without burning ourselves, whatever we need. So just make sure that whatever size tube you use, it slides freely on your cordage and your super match is ready to go. You can tie it to a ferro rod or put it in your fire kit. Now, sometimes the ends will be a little harder. You can just cut that little bit off and you won't have to do that again. That's just because some wax was absorbed into the top there 
as well as the side. See how much easier that's already breaking down versus there? So you can just cut that off and put it in your fire kit as a fire extender. This one, see how much easier that breaks down and fluffs up because we got rid of that hard piece. Now we're ready to throw a spark at it. Let's put it on there to hold it in place. That's not completely necessary, but I like to do it. There you go. Your super match is ready for service. Now remember, this isn't so much a quick fire method as a fire extender method to allow us to deal with difficult situations or even use as a torch at nighttime. Once it gets going, it is decent. It will not stand up to high wind though. And then if you don't have a tube, you can absolutely do this without a tube. You can just cut pieces off or blow it hard. You just lose the ability to control the size of your flame and hold it really close to fire without burning yourself. That's what the tube does for you. Hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you've had a time to make a super match you're going to in the future. Like I said, I, I got mine. Uh, I threw the pitch wood in here, but I got this and a ferro rod from Creek Stewart through a Paco box. Um, good ferro rod. It's when I'm using the Furious. I can't even pronounce it, um, but I'm happy with it. Anyway, for me, this is just a fun fire kit. And the thing to think about with the, the cordage is it is a, it's not so much a rapid fire maker. It does catch a spark, but what the real strength here, the reason that we might want to carry it is it's a fire extender. It gives us the ability to really make fire where we might be having difficulties if we've got wet tinder, or maybe for some reason, we're just not able to process things the way that we we want or we have something limited um, it really is just a super match and it should be used about the same way that you would use a match only without a lot of the weaknesses